And I agree with what you said about uh, about Mikel Arteta. I think Mikel Arteta, there's a lot of, this always happens when a team wins in a slightly more pragmatic way. But I, I would, if I was Arsenal fans this time round, and I've seen Man United suffer this many years when we used to beat Arsenal this way, Fergie would often go away to Arsenal and say, boom, have the ball. If we, and you've got to understand, in, in boxing, they say that styles make fights, same as in any kind of fighting, fighting, fighting sport. It's almost files make styles make fights. The same can be said about certain football matches. And what Spurs need is teams to open up and be expansive against them for, for the way they play to work. So why play into Tottenham's hands when you've got three or four or five injuries and players missing away from home in a derby, which is a pretty good leveler? And we all know that, typically speaking, it levels games out, even when there's disparity between the two teams. Mikel Arteta was absolutely spot on. I think it was another game. He won't silence them forever, but where he silences his haters, people that say that he does he know how to adapt, does he know how to win ugly, does he know how to change things up at the right moment, and he he done that again. And I think Arsenal fans should be so proud because if you think back to maybe two years ago, right up until the last time he won the league, the amount of times Arsenal under Wenger, as an example, would play one way and lose so many of these important games, not be able to adapt, not be able to win ugly. Your fan base, and, and you'll know this better than me, Potsy, it feels to me through my friends who I live with, right through to doing social media work, Arsenal fans have been asking for the occasional win like yesterday for mm. about 20 years. You don't want yeah, to play I... that way every week, and I understand that, but I just thought that Arteta absolutely schooled Big Ange, got his tactics right, they got the win, they go into the, the City game now with far less pressure on them. And you look at the difference, as you say, four wins in 14 games now. The fact is, Man United have been awful. But when when our win ratio in that same time period is better and we won a trophy, that's got to be looked at, considering we know how bad Man United were in that time period. Four games in 14 games. Four, sorry, four wins in 14 games is horrendous. And as you say, Arteta absolutely scored him. Mm. Big time, man. Look, I, I, I've got no problem with seeing Arsenal win 1-0. I mean, I grew up on it with George Graham. It was what I was used to, 1-0s, 2-1s. When Arsene Wenger came in, it was completely different. It was attractive style of play. But there were times where we had to dig in deep over the years and and and, uh, and win 1-0, 2-1. I would say in the Emirates era, it was actually becoming quite laughable at how bad defensively we were. And it was only one way and Wenger just had that one way and he was so stubborn with it. So for Arteta to actually be adaptable is something you've got to give him credit for. And with LB, I think you have to look at that and see, right, what, have he, what has he looked at and shown evidence of? Well, he's seen that Tottenham can't hit a barn door at the moment and he's seen that we're good defensively. So he said, I reckon we can have you in that department. And he knows that there is going to be a set piece because we scored for two of them last season in the first half. We're 3 up in the first half. We actually haven't played a well in the last two games away from home at, um, in the North London derby. But we've won 3-2 and 1-0. And we haven't even played well in either of them. We're written, the one before that we were good. That was before Postacoglu. We were actually really good. We were beat two 0 But we've literally gone there and we've beaten them three times. Their ground has been open for five years and we've beaten them three years already. They've won once in the Emirates in what thirty years, <laughs> and we won three yeah. times already in five. Nah, it's, it, 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 it's a madness. Yeah. The, the thing that I want to say about Spurs as well is who's making the signings here because the signings are questionable, man. You know they're, 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 they are questionable. Is it is it Angie's is Angie the one that's picking the players, or is it like the sporting director, someone on the board, the scouts? Because I'm looking at some of their signings, man. Like 65 M's on on Dominic Solanke is is mad risky. Is a huge gamble. Yeah, he's had one good season in the Premier League. Yeah, Brennan Johnson, 55 million. This is transfer market figures, by the way. Yeah, he's not good enough for Tottenham. And, uh, you know, he needs to be sold. James Madison, uh, listen, that's a weird one because he's a decent player on his day, but how often does he have his day? They've signed this Archie Gray for 40 million uh, for Leeds. Still not, still, he didn't start against thing. It Van der Ven, fair's good. Kulizewski, meh. Odebert, it's going to take him years to, to, to be cooking. Dragusin, I don't see him playing. Vicario started well, but now he's looking a little shaky. Uh, Beliz, 15 mil. Don't know who that guy is. Bergval apparently might be decent, but again, not really seen too much of him. He spent what 370 million quid. How many signings have they actually made there under Posta Coglu that have actually been decent? So who's making those signings? He's also brought back mm -hmm. Timo Werner, by the way, 
which is absolutely shambolic. So on who's top making of that, these signings? On, on top of that, on Werner, 180 grand a week they're paying him. Same as Son. Oh, Son's on that. Son's on that. Like, Son's actually got over 100 goals. This Werner guy's done nothing for both Chelsea and Spurs. It's a shambles. And for Ange to bring him on, by the way, ahead of Addison Christ. I know Madison was playing badly, but wow. When I saw that sub, I was rubbing my hands together, thinking, wow, at least Madison can create something if you actually put him up the pitch a little bit further. But my goodness, Werner, was at, he's just absolutely terrible, isn't he? And look, some of their signings have been hits. I think Kudogi's a good signing. I do think Romero's a good defender, but he's just not in the level that some Spurs fans rate him at. I think Van der Ven's a good player. I do rate Madison. I know that he's off a cliff at the moment. Um, you know, Bissouma on his day started the season last season well as well. So they've got some good players, don't get me wrong. But LB's right. Who the hell is making these signings? And it's always the big money signings, by the way. Davinson Sanchez, 47 million from Ajax. Ndombele, 60 million from uh, Leon. These are massive, massive flops at Tottenham. Who is making these signings? And you know, you can look at you can look at Daniel Levy. Daniel Levy's done a lot of good at Tottenham, right? He has. You know, he's put them into that stadium, he's got them to Champions League football, he's got them fighting for a title once, he's got them to play. I get that. But when it goes to that next level, when is it? When nah, is it? I don't, I, nah. Bro, you're waffling there. He's done a lot of good. No, come on, LB, he has. When have you ever seen Tottenham in your lifetime going for a title? Never. You have under Levy. When have you seen him in a sixty thousand pound? I mean, how long has Levy been at the football you have club? Levy. Wait, 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 wait. How long has Levy been at the football club? Years, mate. Years now. Years. Absolutely. I mean, years, what, mate. Over, over twenty years. Yeah. When did Levy join? Join Spurs. Have a look. Have a look when he joined Spurs. Well, He's been responsible the, the, for them. Yeah, but the point He's is, you, when have you? When it? When have your lifetime? Have you seen them challenge for the title? I mean, I'm thirty. And I don't remember Spurs being... Once. That's it. Well, he's been there the whole time, bro. So how has he done a good job? No, no, no. He's been... He has been... Daniel Levy is responsible for what Tottenham have done, getting them into a title, putting them into a Champions League final, putting them into the to, into the, one of the biggest stadiums. My question mark is what they're going to do next. Has he got the ambition to get yeah, them across bro, that line? I think you're waffling there, bro. I think you're, you, you're telling me you're giving credit to Levy for getting them to a Champions League final. And, and, and I, think they, I, think Levy deserve, I think I think Levy deserves credit for, some of the credit for that. 100%. 100%. So, so, so not, not, My question not, mark not, is what does he do now? My question mark is where is his ambition to go across the line next? Where's his ambition to not just get top four, go win a title, go well, win a don't have that ambition. They don't, they don't have that ambition. That is, my, is that he, is my, that's what I'm saying. So but this, this what I'm you saying. can't give him credit for getting them to a Champions League final. That has to go solely, in my opinion, to the to the manager and the players. It's not, it's not, it's not Levy didn't have anything to do with, with Spurs getting to a Champions League final. That's down to the players, yeah, down to fucking Lucas when he done that absolute madness against Ajax, yeah. Uh, and, and the manager. It's nothing to do with Levy. Levy wasn't out on the pitch. No, 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 no. I get that. I get, I get, I get that. But what I'm saying is, he might. Okay, let me let me explain it differently then. So he, because I'm not giving Levy credit here, by the way, at all, because that's the last thing I want to do. But you I'm saying, him over, him, him, over, him over. Just listen, listen to what I'm saying. Him overseeing Tottenham that time that he did, well, they have been in a Champions League final. They have been a, a title race when it been been like, coming third, by the way, which I always like to add against Leicester, and they're in one of the best stadiums in, in, in the league. He deserves credit for overseeing that, in my opinion, over, overseeing that project, right? Where he doesn't deserve credit is they haven't actually won anything. So that's what I'm getting at. When is Daniel Levy going to show the ambition with Spurs fans, with the club, to go, I'm going to go to that next level? And I'm not so sure that he has. Now, you can say, <clears throat> for the first time in a long time, he has actually tried to at least back Ange Postacoglu with what has been 400 million euros that he's now spent. I think it's like, I think you said it, 300 and whatever it is that he's actually done. Listen, uh, uh, the history of the Tottenham, that's what they say, right? I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't think personally that Daniel Levy has been an absolute shambles. But when it comes to getting them across the line... I think he's been an absolute man. shambles. Okay. He's, been, he's, been, he's been at that football club. But according I, I, to I'm Wikipedia, not going to argue that. No, bro, it says there, according to Wikipedia, he's been here yeah, since, uh, since 2001. Right in 2016, he's be he became the highest paid Premier League chief executive in the whole league. Yeah, we're getting <laughs> six million pound a year. Right, so he's been there now. What 20, 24 years? Out, they won one trophy. That bro, you cannot say you can't get any credit whatsoever, bro. The 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 the, 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 the managerial sackings have been poor in the past. The way that they buy players is shocking. The way that they invest into the team is poor. Yeah. The fans hate him, which is a good indication that he's not done a good job. 
that he's one of the worst people in football. He is not bothered about winning. All they're bothered about at Spurs, yeah, is buying these players who are who are not elite, so then they can grow them and after a few years flog them. Yeah, I mean, and then they do this. Oh, we didn't really want to sell him, but we we had to because no, 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 they're not interested. How many times have they gone out there and bought a world class player? How many times? No, they don't do that, do they? They're not that club. They ain't that club. They don't go and buy world class players. They, they always they always try and buy the players that like no one else really wants and tries to develop them, man. He's a he's a he's a shambolic he's a shambolic football person, man. He's horrendous, and, and Spurs fans should be doing everything possible to get him out of the club. Yeah, and just because he just because he got him into a new stadium, is it? What is this? Do you know what I mean? It's not an estate agent. That means but, but best people in the football club. But this is where football fans are like moths half the time. I, I understand. We were talking about this last week. 